Hello, family, and welcome to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty Guadagno, and today I am joined by Rich. Rich is a YouTuber. He has a tarot card channel. He has a podcast channel. And today we're going to talk about all things spiritual. I was actually on Rich's podcast a couple of months ago, and we have very similar paralleled stories. And so I always love the synchronicity of that connection. And um, yeah, I'm really excited that you're willing to come on and share your story with, uh, with Ions. So thanks so much, Rich. And I'm going to toss it right over to you to start sharing your experience. Okay. Well, um, actually, th this is a story that I've just recently started putting out there because I'm very open about my story because similar to what you talk about, uh, I went from rock bottom to manifesting my wildest dreams. And I tell the story of how I went from being homeless and an alcoholic to, you know, learning how to manifest my best life. But there's a part of the story that I've kind of left out and that is my near-death experience because honestly it's still kind of hard to tell because uh it just sounds so silly i think but uh anyway though back in 2014 i had just left my first marriage it was a very very toxic marriage and my goal at least my initial plan was to pick myself up and start getting myself on my own two feet by myself so that I could then hopefully be a better father to my kids who were toddlers at the time. Uh, it didn't really work that way. I kept spiraling further and further downhill and was starting to become incredibly suicidal and uh, turned into a very, very heavy, heavy alcoholic. <clears throat> um, right around this time, my ex-wife called me and said, I can't take the kids. I can't take care of them. You got to come get them. So long story short, here I am, uh, full blown functioning alcoholic, now single father spiraling downhill fast. And in addition to that, for years, my favorite subject to study and listen to and whatnot was near death experiences. And this this little obsession of mine didn't really help me spiraling downhill because I'm hearing all these amazing stories of, you know, how beautiful it is on the other side and the, the beautiful white light and the unconditional love and all these, you know, receiving downloads of universal knowledge and information and whatnot. And the, and the more I hear this, I'm just like, man, I, what am I doing here then? You know, if it's that awesome over there, I don't want to be here. So I'm spiraling downhill fast. Well, anyway, to, to try to summarize it at one point, I got suspended from work, um, uh, for showing up drunk. And I had just moved into this really creepy old house. And I had found out that the woman who lived there before I moved in died in the living room. And one day I ended up connecting with somebody who was like a friend of a friend on Facebook. And one thing led to another. I said, well, I'm suspended from work. I'm bored. Do you like to drink? You want to come hang out at my house this week and keep me company while I'm bored? And she said, yeah. So I, I picked her up and, and didn't, like I said, I didn't know her and we're talking and, and it got brought up somehow that I said, you know, the, I just moved into this house and the lady that lived here before me died in a living room. And she said, Oh, you want to talk to her? I was like, what, what do you mean? Talk to her at this point in my life? I know nothing about anything spiritual or metaphysical or none of that 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 was such a foreign idea to me i didn't know what she was talking about she said i know how to talk to dead people through ouija boards and that was like the most bizarre thing that i'd ever heard in my life but i'm like oh, okay well wow why not why not you know drinking heavily Let, let's do it you know so she ripped a pizza box in half and took a black permanent marker and 
turned a pizza box into a Ouija board. And she used a little beer bottle cap to, you know, be the little thing that you move around or whatever. And so we're sitting here and we got our fingers on this thing and she's asking it questions and this thing is moving like crazy. But in my mind, I'm thinking she's just making all this up. She's making this thing move and this is so stupid. This is so embarrassing. I didn't know her, so I didn't want to be rude. But in my in my drunken stupor, I get this idea in my mind. I'm like, okay, how do I get out of this without being rude and without embarrassing her and without making this really awkward? So I got this idea in my mind. I said, ah, oh, I know what I'm going to do. So the idea that I played out in my mind was that I'm going to ask the spirit a question and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to get the answer wrong because it's her doing it. And that's going to give me an easy out. I'm going to be able to back out of it and say, I don't want to do that no more. So that was the idea that I played out in my mind. And I said, okay, let me ask it a question. I said, are you a spirit that knows me? And it went to yes. And I said, okay, spell your name. And it spelled out the name of my dead grandmother. Um, my grandparents raised me. I was taken away from my parents when I was two. Had a real traumatic childhood. Was raised by my grandparents. And that she so basically that was the only mom that I ever had. And it, the thing about it was it wasn't one of those common names that some random person could just guess. You know, like it wasn't Sarah or Ashley or something like that. It, her name was Jeanette. And it was spelled J-E-A-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And I went, oh, my God. I, and I, I guess I got my wish, <laughs> but it wasn't the way I was wanting it to go down. I said, we got to quit this right now. She said, well, I was wrong. I said, dude, that's my grandma's name. And she said, oh, cool. We're talking to your grandma. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no. My grandma was like real hardcore Christian hardcore Christian. She would be rolling over in her grave if she even knew that I was doing this right now. There is no way she would talk to me through a Ouija board, you know? So we we tore it up and threw the thing away. And then this is where it starts getting crazy. Uh, because up to this point, I would hear stories about this all the time, and I honestly never believed it. But I swear to you, my house went crazy cabinet doors slamming, you know, dishes and peanut butter jars flying off the shelf. And it, it there was a couple of times where I, I actually sat and watched like a black ball of energy roll down the hallway and through the living room. And, and then you would hear these banging on the air ducts, boom, 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 boom. And at the time though, I was drinking so heavily um, sitting around drinking hundred proof vodka all day, uh, that I'm just watching it like, Whoa, that's cool, dude. Whoa. You mean that's real cool. So I, I'm just so far gone that I, I was kind of fascinated by it. But anyway, so long story short, we're getting up to, I know it may not sound like that's very important, but it leads into, an, into the experience. We were sitting in the kitchen at the table. And I don't remember what we were talking about, but somehow suicide got brought up. And I just, I just barely remember thinking or saying something to the effect of, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I've had enough to drink. I'm good and numb. I got the courage. And I kind of barely remember going down into my cellar and tying a belt up to the rafter. I kind of remember doing that. But my next conscious memory is I'm inside my wall down in the cellar. I'm inside the wall and I'm suspended in blackness and in, in just darkness. All around me and all behind me was darkness. And in front of me was what I can only, I guess, describe as like a portal, I guess. And it just kind of looked like a screen that, that 
I could see through it and it, it was kind of blurry. So it wasn't like I couldn't see exactly what it was, but somehow I just intrinsically knew that on the other side of that portal was this dimension. And that was the inside of my cellar. And I was, that was from the vantage point of being inside the wall. Somehow I just knew this. And this is where it, it, this, this part of it is what always bugged me looking back because the weirdest part about it was there was no train of thought I didn't have any thoughts or feelings like, oh my God, what am I doing here? How did I get here? What's going on here? You know, there there was none of that. I just like existed. I was just like there. I just am. And it, I, I really can't even put words to it. But then at the same time, to the left of me were these people, these beings and they were suspended in the darkness with me. There was about maybe seven or eight of them. And they were all communicating amongst each other and communicating to me. And I was able to communicate back with them. And it all happened inside my head at the same time. And it wasn't confusing. This is what was so weird about it. And I couldn't even begin to like recap everything that was talked about or what was said. But the only thing that I, I got out of it basically was we are not here to hurt you. Uh, we are pure negative energy. Like on earth, most people are a mixture of the two, you know, like some people are, maybe 90% positive energy, 10% negative energy. Some people are 90% negative and 10% positive and anywhere in between. But we are pure negative energy. And at the time, I didn't know anything about energy. So the, the way it was conveyed to me was it's the energy that causes negative emotions. Like the same energy that causes feelings of anger hate, betrayal, you know, all those low frequency emotions. We are the energy that causes those emotions. And you invited us in here. We're here because you invited us here. And that's basically it. Like, there, I mean, I guess there's, it's like, there's nothing really to be scared of. We're not angry with you. We're not here to kill you. We're not here to hurt you. We're just here because you invited us here. And that was basically it. And that's the only thing I can remember that I got out of it. And um, I can kind of remember losing interest in that. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, that's not interesting anymore. And I remember looking at the portal and I, cause there was, it, it wasn't really like, I wasn't thinking, I don't even know how to explain it, but I guess I thought, I wonder what's over there. Or something like that. And as soon as I thought that, I shot straight through the portal. I came into this dimension, shot across the room, through my cellar, and through the wall on the other side of my cellar, the other wall, shot straight through it. And now I'm standing in like a field or like a meadow, like a big, open, grassy field or meadow or something like that and then there's this other being that was there and this is the this is the part i have a hard time describing because my biological father now has has passed but at the time he wasn't dead if he would have been dead back then i would have thought that was him because it felt like my dad it felt like a father figure and he was scolding me. I, I'm not quoting him verbatim, but basically the, the, the vibration behind it was, you idiot. You know better than that. What are you doing? And said something to the effect of, 
the only way you're going to be able to get that energy out of that house is with some sort of magic or spell work or something like that, or some sort of energy work, something like that. And at the time I knew nothing about any of that. So I didn't even understand what that meant. And my next conscious memory is I'm waking up in my bed. And uh, the friend that I had over was sitting at the foot of the bed, screaming and crying, saying, you don't know what you put me through. I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? I just had the craziest dream. And she told me, she said, you went down in the cellar and you hung yourself. And I came down there and your face had turned white. You stopped breathing. Your heart stopped beating and your tongue was hanging out of your mouth. And I had to cut you down and do CPR and revive you. And I didn't believe her. I was like, nah, you didn't quit making stuff up, you know? And she said, go look in the mirror. And I went and looked in the mirror and there was a, a gash. There was a cut where the belt cut my neck and it felt like somebody punched me in the throat, you know? And I was like, whoa. And then that kind of made me a little bit angry because like I said, I had always I had for years, I'd been listening to these near death experiences and what I experienced was nothing like what I had hoped to experience. At the time when I was in it, there was no feelings at all. Looking back, though, thinking back, it took me forever to be able to tell that story because thinking back on it sounds like something that you would see in a horror movie, like straight out of a Hollywood horror film or something like that. But at the time, there was no emotion. There was no feelings. There was no nothing. And I think now I've come to understand it, that I think the problem was my vibration was so low, was so low that I, I, I couldn't make it very far onto the other side. So I think I made it over there to the lower astral realm, you know, where like ghosts and spirits and lost souls hang out. And uh, yeah, but anyway, that's that's the experience. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, man, mm -hmm. that's, you know, I love that you're talking about uh, people who have suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation, listening to near death experiences, because you're not alone. I hear it all the time, you know, and so I'm just going to put like a little link up here for if you're looking for support, if you are experiencing thoughts like that, um, there's so much support out there to help you with that. And, um, and yeah, I'm, yeah, I've got so many questions. Okay. Number one, have you ever talked to that lady that you were partying with again? Have you ever seen her again? Um, no, not really. And actually now I just found out a couple of months ago that she's passed away now. So oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, All right. Was, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say she was a heavy drug user, so it, it yeah. was probably a drug overdose, but I don't know. I'm just yeah. speculating. So, yeah, I'm just curious because like, it's, it's so crazy that this happens to be the person that you experienced this with. Did, did you ever figure out like how she got you into your bed? How did she carry you upstairs? Uh, th the way she described it, she, she said she cut the belt down and was struggling to flip me over. And then when she finally got my heart beating and, and like me breathing and whatnot, I was rolling around and kicking and whatnot. And she said she basically had to like carry me up and drag me to my bed is what she told me. I don't remember though. So of course. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think that there's any sort of like deep spiritual meaning behind that? I mean, my brain is going a thousand different places. Like you transfer timelines, like this is an alternate reality, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts about that experience and how well, you just sort of woke up and not realized what had happened. I, I still kind of struggle with that. Another funny thing, though, is that and this and this is what I've left out on a couple of other podcasts is that, like I said, right before I remember coming to that being was telling me that you're going to have to do some sort of magic or spell work or energy work to clear that energy out of the house. I didn't know what that meant. And then my brother came over and I, I told him the things that had been happening. And he said, oh, you want me to cleanse the house for you? And I was like, sure. So he did a little ritual and then poof, the energy left and it never came back. And I was thinking, whoa, okay, cool. 
Uh, but as far as any any um, spiritual significance, I still kind of struggle with that, honestly, um, because that wasn't my final suicide attempt. I did try it again after that. Um, but I, but the second time I didn't have like any experience at all and I got caught and stuck in a mental hospital. And then that's where my path truly began was right there. And I, I, it was just downloaded to me. You're not allowed to leave. You have a mission. And that was all I knew. So I should probably think about that a little bit more because I, like I said, I still, I, I'm having, a, I have a hard time telling that story. That's part of my story that I'm still not okay with. It's still really matter of fact, back in May, I took my kids to visit their mom, uh, there where I'm from. I live in California now. And, and, uh, and I showed my wife that house that it happened in and just setting foot in that town. Just, I feel those demons creeping up and trying to swallow me up. And I still have some healing that I need to do as far as that goes. So to answer the question, I, I'm not sure, honestly. All right. Yeah. You know what? I just want to say again, thank you so much for your courage and your bravery talking about these really uncomfortable things because it's mm -hmm. going to help somebody, even if it's just one person, it's going, mm -hmm. I mean, it's helping me right now because it's so healing to know that we're not bound to the narrative of our past and that we can, you know, trans transform it and move past it. And the healing journey is not linear, you know, like it goes in loops and it's like this big infinity symbol. And, and I just, I am really touched by your courage because I think that it's so amazing to talk about things that are not easy to talk about. Um, so I'm wondering, okay, so yeah, you still dealt with some of that, um, like really dark energy sort of bringing mm -hmm. you down. What's your recovery journey been like? Are you in recovery? You said that you had, you know, a lot of issues with alcohol and substances. So I'm curious what that's like. Yeah, that uh, from that point, I still struggled with it a lot. And um, I've gone back and forth and on and off a few times. And then the last time I had a drink, something very negative attached to me very negative and like i mean i drank for so many years matter of fact i was always known for being so well functioning well I, I would you know put vodka in a water bottle and go to work and operate heavy machinery and nobody knew nobody could tell and so i was always just so kind of cocky and arrogant like oh i can i can control myself and then i think like the last time i drank something very negative attached to me and overtook me. And that's when I said, no, I'm, I'm never touching it again, ever, ever, ever. Like it was enough to completely turn me off to it, you know, and it's not been easy. It's to answer the question as directly as possible. It's been kind of on and off and it's been a bumpy road. Um, but now after seeing what is possible, that something because like they say they call alcohol spirits you know because those negative entities attach to you and i would always hear that and be like ah I, I got i got better control than that and you know i i thought you know i'd get a little cocky and a little arrogant and then i was shown that oh no oh no i don't and it was enough to completely turn me off to it now i would rather because alcohol was always my anxiety medication i didn't drink to get drunk i drank to feel normal and now I will sit and suffer a panic attack before I take a drink of alcohol, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's been a rough road. Yeah. Again, recovery, healing, none of it is linear. You know, it just, it ebbs and flows, it expands, it contracts. And yeah, that's all part of it. And that, that's, you know, like how I, I perceive it to be anyway. Mm -hmm. So I know that I, I know a little bit of your story just from us talking before. And I know that uh, you said that you figured out how to master the law of attraction. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if maybe you can dive a little bit into that. Yeah. Um, well, so after the suicide attempts, I got out of the mental hospital and then I ended up losing everything and going homeless. And I, I spent the, the latter half of 2015 living up under a bridge. And then when wintertime rolled around, 
I didn't want to be on the streets in the winter. So there was actually, matter of fact, where I was, there was all the resources that, that anybody would need to climb up out of that. It was just that nobody wanted to. But I decided, I was like, no, I'm not sleeping on the streets in the cold. So I turned myself into a homeless shelter slash recovery program and um, started working my way up from there. And then I left there and went to a transitionary home where I could get a job and start trying to make myself get back into normal society. And one of my things to do on my off days, one of my favorite things to do is I would go sit at a McDonald's and use their Wi-Fi to watch YouTube videos. I would take a dollar up there, get a drink and just refill my drink and just sit there and watch YouTube videos because I had nothing else to do. And I was watching, of course, near-death experiences. And there was this one that was titled, I Saw the Law of Attraction in my NDE. And I was like, wait a minute, what? You mean, you mean to tell me that all these things I've been going through, I have the power to actually change it? If this is real, I'm going to do it. And I became obsessed with it and addicted to it. And from that point, it was no longer near death experiences. It was law of attraction manifestation. I became addicted to it. And then I kept using it for little things here and there and, and whatnot. And then about a year and a half into that journey, I, one thing led to another and I actually ended up attending a mind master's school that was founded and taught by a former NASA scientist where basically over the course of several months, I heard it broken down and explained from a perspective where I was explained, where I was taught the actual quantum physics and the science behind how it works. And I'm the type of person that I'm a logical thinker. So hearing it broken down in these terms helped me really understand the mechanism behind how it works. And um, so I started using it to manifest a business. You know, I mean, most people who want to use the law of attraction, that's either their love life or their money, you know, because those are the two energies that we tend to struggle with the most. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to use it to manifest my own business. And I didn't know that it was going to end up being this. This was an accident. I'm, I'm a tarot card reader on YouTube, and that was an accident. I did not mean to manifest a tarot card reading business, but understanding how manifestation works and the science behind it, long story short, nothing manifests while you're thinking about it and focusing on it. It can't because you're put, you're pulling a clamp on the quantum field while you're thinking about it. So the biggest thing to when it comes to learning how to manifest is you need to, to know how and when to remove your focus so you can release the quantum field and let it flow with the intentions that you put into it. And that's when this popped off and blew up. And then my life arranged itself to the, to the point where I had no choice. It was my only source of income. So I'm thinking, well, I, th th this whole tarot community and whatnot I don't even agree with the way that that community is structured to look at life in the world because usually people come to a tarot card reader and they're wanting to know what future is going to happen to me that's what they want to know but I've dedicated my life to learning how to create my future and not just sit and wait for it to happen so why did the universe stick me in this position? And I started thinking, oh, well, you know what I think I can do? I can bring people in with this and I can take a look at their energy and then I can plant little seeds and give them tools and send them on their way with some knowledge and some wisdom that they can use to actually make a change in their future instead of just waiting for a future to happen to them. You know what I'm saying? And that's in a nutshell, the way I, I have learned it myself. And then the universe put me in a position to where I'm having to give back. If that makes any sense.
Oh yeah, definitely. That's incredible. Yeah. So what was, what, what was the pull towards tarot? Like, why did you even start making tarot videos to begin with? Well, it's so interesting. Um, this would make a very fascinating book or a movie, but on my journey, I eventually ended up traveling and traveling all across the country. I was like a feather in the wind. And then at one point where I was living my life, was at any given moment tomorrow I could wake up and have to move to a different state and I would just cross my fingers and meet random people and say hey you need a roommate I need a place to live I'll help you with the bills and I was just living life like this for a little bit and uh one person in particular I ended up experiencing this insanely deep connection with that was so deep that it was actually really uncomfortable and long story short well during that time i met some random person who walked up to me and said i'm supposed to read for you and i was like what does that mean and and she said but for some reason spirit is telling me i'm supposed to read for you do i have your permission and i said uh I guess. So we exchanged phone numbers and she came and picked me up a few days later and took me to her house and started flipping these strange, funny looking cards all over the place and starts telling me details about my childhood that nobody knows. And it's freaking me out. I'm like, what? What in the world? And then there was, see, she was a psychic medium, but there was even one point where she said, there's somebody on the other side that wants to talk to you. And I was like, okay. And she said, who do you know that smoked a pipe? My grandfather. The day I came home and found him dead, I had just come from the store to buy him a pack of pipe tobacco. And I walked in the house and found him dead. So when she said that, I'm like, oh, whoa, you have my attention. You know? Well, anyway... So all, all this stuff kind of happened there in one little time block where I met this person, experienced this really ins insane connection, and then this random person gave me this creepy, accurate, scary tarot card reading. Long story short, I put all that behind me, and I'm traveling, and now I'm up on the northeast coast of the United States, and I am start getting these videos recommended to me tarot card reading videos and my YouTube feed. And my first thought was that is the stupidest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> People watch this, you know, but then this little voice would creep up in the back of my mind. Well, I know that tarot is legit because I've had a reading, but there is no way that some random person can tell me anything about my life by reading cards for my zodiac sign and putting it on youtube that is so stupid but i kept noticing these videos have 30 40 50 000 views i'm like well good god people are watching this stuff so finally one day i clicked on one and it told the story of that really insane connection that i experienced with that person and i got addicted to it so basically the only thing that i was trying to do was get clarity on the situation that i'd dealt with that connection with that person and um i wasn't so i i dove in and i was like addicted to the videos on youtube and it just kept leading me in a circle going nowhere and i said okay well you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go up to the spiritual store i'm gonna buy me a deck of these things and i'm gonna learn how to read them myself that's what's gonna give me the clarity and the answer that i'm looking for so that's what i did i dedicated my the next several months of my life to learning how to read these things and just to get clarity on my own situation. But I didn't get clarity at all. I was getting the same thing that the YouTube readers were getting. And then this little voice in the back of my mind was like, well, I wonder what would happen if I put a couple of those videos on my channel. Nah, I couldn't do that. I, I would get laughed off the internet, you know, and, and I just kept getting this, this calling louder and louder and till finally, I was just like, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to put a couple of those videos on my channel just to scratch that itch. And, uh, you know, didn't 
think that it was ever going to, I didn't think anybody was going to watch it. And then it blew up overnight. Then it blew up. And then all of a sudden, after it blew up, it was like the universe wanted me there because everything in my life surrounding that started falling apart. Me and the girl I was dating, I swear, we went from best friends. She woke up and she just changed on me overnight. We broke up. I ended up losing my job. I had to move. And I was backed into a corner with nothing but a phone and a deck of tarot cards and thousands of people in my inbox begging me for personal readings. And I'm like, I don't know how to read the cards. I was just playing, but I had no choice. I was like, well, maybe hopefully it'll work, you know? And then, so I started doing it. I started doing it. And, and then I kept getting all this really positive feedback. And I'm like, uh, maybe I, <laughs> you know, so I, I just kind of found myself shoved in that position. But again, I had a problem with it because it's, it's a really dangerous thing to get addicted to because it can end up leading you, spinning you in circles, going nowhere and people can get addicted to it and dependent on it. So that's why I make it a really, really strong point. If you ever watch any of the videos that I put on YouTube or anybody comes to me for a reading, I give advice, advice, advice. So like when somebody comes to me, I want to give them their power back and teach them how to use it, you know? So that's the short version. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I love how you're talking about how the rest of your life kind of fell apart in order to actually make sure that you stay on this particular path. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that's a great reminder for people who are experiencing a challenge in letting go of maybe something from their past that perhaps that thing went away to keep you on a different path or to put you on a different path. So I really love that. And yeah, there's so mm -hmm. many awesome synchronicities yeah. in your story. That's totally incredible. So tell me what it's been like going from a skeptic to now a believer. I think mean, that's what I'm getting from you anyway, that you were once a skeptic, like would not even, yeah, entertain the idea of sort of like spirits or anything. And now, you, yeah, you're kind of on this very, um, very spiritual path. What is, what has that yeah. been like? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I guess you could say I was a skeptic. That's a good way to put it, but I've just been overly logical. Like I'm a, I am was always a really logical, I need the evidence first before I believe it. But at the time that it, basically it was learning how to manifest that taught me how to have faith. And the, the cool thing about that was I was at rock bottom when I first learned what law of attraction was. If I was at a point in my life where I was comfortable, had a decent job, money coming in, healthy relationship. I was comfortable. I would have scrolled past that and I wouldn't pay any attention to it, but it was because I was at rock bottom and I was desperate. So I was like, when I'm this desperate, I'll try anything. I don't care. And, um, it's it. So, so that kind of makes looking back on everything that I went through, make more sense. It's like, Oh, now I see why I went through all that. And it's, it's, what's it been like difficult uh, because it requires you to let go of your identity, let go of a lot of beliefs, you know, that, that certain perspectives and viewpoints that you think, you know, you, you see the world a certain way and you think, you know, who you are, you think, you know, what this world is, you think, you know, what this life is and, and learning how to tap into something bigger, especially if you want to create a life for yourself, it's going to require you to shed a lot of that. Not only that, but it's going to require you to be honest with yourself, call yourself out on your own bullshit and and transform yourself from the inside out. And it's been rough, but I think it gets easier for me personally. After a certain point, I kind of got addicted to that discomfort, that the discomfort and the uncomfortable feelings that come along with it. Once I started seeing the results and once I started seeing how amazing now, you know, I, I'm have a a good job where I'm self-employed, uh, married to my life partner, my wife, and she's my business manager. She runs the business. I got my kids back. And after seeing the amazing results that can happen in life, 
it doesn't make it any easier really it's kind of like to me i always equate it to like physical fitness and going to the gym it doesn't get easier but once you start seeing the results it gets you kind of addicted to it if that makes sense you know oh yeah completely and yeah just hearing that transformation that arc of the story of like reunion and transformation it's so inspiring you know i'm mm -hmm. yeah i'm really grateful that you were willing to come on and share all of these really vulnerable pieces of yourself. Like it is not easy to do that. Something that you said that maybe we could touch on just a little bit before we wrap up talking about rock bottom. Me too, mm -hmm. me too, me too. My story, definitely my transformation took place in the pit of desperation in the bottom of rock bottom. But that doesn't necessarily have to be that way for everybody. Like you do mm -hmm. not have to hit a bottom like we did in order to transform. And I think that's why we come back with these stories. And I think that's why spirit calls us to tell our stories so that it can be, it can be a guide, a guidepost, like in your own journey. And there's definitely a way to hit a spiritual bottom that does not necessarily reflect your outer world. And, um, and yeah, you know, like, I just want to say, like, if anybody's looking for support uh, at IONS, we have a bunch of sharing groups that if you're looking for support, like on your spiritual journey, I'll put a little link right here. You can click on that and join our sharing groups. And there's just so much support. I'm sure that Rich would be open to being contacted. I'm definitely open to being contacted. You can find our information in the liner notes of this. And yeah, is there anything else that you'd like to share about, Rich, to feel more complete about our time today? Well, I, I, actually, it's uh, good that you said what you said, because that's one of the biggest messages that I try to put out is that you don't have to wait till you're at rock bottom. Um, it's I would not recommend doing it the way that I did it. Uh, I'm personally me as an individual. I am insanely stubborn, insanely stubborn. And that energy of stubbornness can be your greatest asset or your biggest liability, depending on how you're channeling and focusing that energy. So, yeah, it, it would be best not to wait till you hit rock bottom. Um, most of us, though, I think most of the people in their life never really see much of a change. They they're they're born into this world they're programmed and they stay on that same frequency their whole life. And they're kind of sitting around and waiting for something to change. And my biggest thing with, 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 with everything that I do in the spiritual community, you know, in the position that I'm in to be able to, to reach a, a big audience, what I always want to do is I want to bridge the gap between spirituality and all these other little groups and clicks and whatnot because if you look at the population you see everybody's divided into a bunch of little groups and there's just little groups here little groups there and everybody's looking for the little group that they want to fit into and spirituality is no different it's another little group over here too and it's like no we we need to to figure out i want to be able to figure out how to say that one thing that I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what group you fit in background is. You can figure out how to apply the stuff to your life. So that's why, like, if you follow me on social media, you'll see that, like, I'm not one of those spiritual public figures on the internet that, that builds my identity around my spirituality. Um, I integrate spirituality into all aspects of my life. So like, if, like on my Instagram, I'm posting about fitness. I'm into fitness and gardening and, and all my other regular family hobbies, because like I said, the, we, I think it's very important in the day and age that we're in right now to, to help people awaken and, and true, real, authentic spirituality that anybody can relate to is my goal and my mission. So you see a lot of, you know, people in the, the spiritual community who some people like to put on this theatrical production and, and put on this little act that is, is really, you get, get you addicted to it. It's entertaining to watch, but a lot of people have a hard time connecting with it. You know, when, when my goal is to help everybody understand we're all regular people. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. You can, you can take, your power as a creative 
being and you can apply it to your life and and create whatever kind of life you want. You don't have to wait till you're at rock bottom. If you I don't care if you're a, a sports nerd that likes to go to the bar and drink a beer and watch the game and and whatnot. You can still if you don't like the life that you're at, if you would rather create something bigger and better, you can start manifesting your reality. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be one of these spiritual people that that floats on a cloud and drinks their green smoothie you know you, you don't have to be that is that does that make any sense you see where i'm getting with this absolutely listen if rich and i can manifest our realities then you <laughs> can do anything like literally you know uh, and yeah you know i and i really think that people connect to authenticity which is another mm -hmm. reason why i'm so grateful that you came out here and you shared your authentic self, you know, like mm -hmm. whether your story is the same as somebody that listens to it or not, you're in the vibration of your truth. And that's really like what, that's what I think spirituality and the spiritual journey is all about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to have all your links in the liner notes of this episode. And I just want to thank you one more time for coming out here and, and being so willing to serve our community. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. We'll see you thank next you. time. All right.